Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another podcast uh, where we go ahead and discuss the different options that we have to do masters in economics. Today we have with us Swasti, and she is going to go ahead and tell us all about South Asian University and how you can go ahead and you can, uh, you know, do your masters in economics from there. So welcome to the show. Hi, ma'am. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. So, uh. You know, tell us about um, what made you go uh, for South Asian University and how's the campus life there? Okay, so what made me go there was the lack of options, I'd say. <laughs> but uh, coming here, I have no regrets. Like, it is one of the premier institutes you can get in India. And uh, moreover, it's developed by the SARC initiative thing. So it's a plus point. Campus life, it's great. Campus is super big. And uh, the infrastructure is also very good. Like, uh, it's way better than Delhi University. It's not, I would say, it's not world class, but it's still very good. Like, you have air-conditioned classrooms. You have a very good library, great collection there. I was in love with the library at day one. And uh, then you have proper working systems and stuff like that. Campus is a bad is bad in bit of its approach. Like you have to travel four kilometers from the Chhatrapur metro station to the campus, and uh, there is a road in between the Sadbari road, which is actually bad, uh, which makes the approach bad. Actually, that is the only thing. Otherwise, the campus is super good. It's still under construction, and there are many blocks that are being introduced. We have recently introduced a PCM block, and everything is like going on simultaneously yes they recently shifted to this campus right earlier yes, very recently yes yes right so um they have this uh, specialization in development economics yes other than just doing a master's in economics yes. how different is the course as compared to a general master's in economics course Okay, so what I believe, it's like when we do a general economics course, we have to cover all bits of it. We are also covering all, all bits of it, but the development part is in a bit of depth. Like we have to study in all the possible aspects we can, uh, whether it's from a theoretical approach or a practical approach, we have to, we are expected to do some rigorous derivations too. So, yeah, that's the bit that is different, but it's not like that is better or this is better. It just depends on your interest. If you're interested in development, because development is a bit of a modern field too, but it's upcoming, definitely. Because so, India is in fact a developing country and hold this, all the South nations, yes. But but they do teach you micro, macro maths in the first yes. exam, right? Yes. We have stats also, eco tricks also. Everything is there. We just uh, asked, specializing in development eco so we have to study in a bit of depth from the other institutions otherwise everything is same is same got it yeah and uh, so you know usually i have heard that there will be students who will be there from different countries yes be a very inclusive environment so very how how is the proportion of students coming from different countries and how does it change the way you look at things actually uh, Day one, I remember it. One of our teachers said that uh, stop calling yourself Afghanistanis or stop calling yourself Indians. Just call yourself South Asians now. So it's a very inclusive environment. You get to like meet a lot of uh, other people from various ethnicities and diversities. We have people from Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, everywhere. And it's just lovely. Even from India, we have a whole lot of a whole lot of diversity, like from people from South, Bengal, and North, and everything. So it's just lovely. And we celebrate all the all the festivals. Like we celebrated it recently went by. Own um and things like that. Got it. So, uh, let's now talk about the uh, you know placement side. Any internship opportunities and placement opportunities that are provided by South, or uh, do you have a placement cell per se? Okay, placement cell. No, we don't have a placement cell. But in our batch, some of the students have started this. Like uh, we have started uh, with a placement drive or something. We, uh, it's just a LinkedIn page as of now, but uh, it's just a start. It's an initiative so that uh, batches from now onwards can take it forward to a better place. 
at least we have a placement still that way so people can approach us otherwise there was no approach earlier like how people would connect to you even if they want to hire you and talking about internships i think sau had many uh, like tie ups not proper internship system but we got, get opportunities in research and things like that and alumni and faculties are very like uh, supportive in that matter mm-hmm. it's not properly a very formal system but yes we we can uh, like uh, get good opportunities here too But it's basically research institutions very good for research amazing like the top in india i'd say the course structure is also molded in a very research uh, what do we say favored manner so would you say that people who are preparing for upsc exam or mm-hmm. you know for phd that would be the right audience to go and uh, do masters from sau or even the corporate the one who is interested in corporate should go there anyone can go there but uh, the thing is how do you like uh, pivot your academics that way if you are like interested in phd then sau is a very great place because it itself offers phd afterwards and then coming to upsc there are lot of aspirants in my classroom also who who is uh, who are preparing for upsc in, uh, in entrance exams like that so there is we have a whole good ratio who wants to go to government jobs corporates research a good ratio and everyone is like okay this course is fine because you know course is similar to every other institute but we are just like a bit of research oriented bit of research oriented and uh, then we have the specialization in development eco got it so uh, what about the faculty at sau how is the faculty faculty super learned like we have uh, faculty from isi and various other institutes they all are like experts in their field and their teaching method it's actually very subjective but i like it i like all of them and uh, they they are very supportive like if someone i'm not from a core economics background i am a business economics graduate from delhi university so i'm not in a habit of totally deriving uh, every model and every and anything like that so they are very helpful like uh, if you have any questions you can mail them and they're super responsive in their approach what okay. yeah. super helpful people okay okay so we can go ahead and we can say that you know uh, just a a little issue with the placement cell but otherwise other things are at par with any other university or college that we have at par or even better only two things are missing here the approach and it's not a it's not that of a, that big of a deal it's a headache but it's not a problem you face with and second this 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 informal way of placements but it's not completely absent but you can make your way up there got it so yes. how should one prepare for the entrance exam although sau is now also a part of cuet yes. they still uh, are keeping their you know own entrance exam yes. prepare for that okay so i obviously gave cuet first and then that those notes only helped me into sau but what i did like i didn't miss even one previous year previous year are game changers for any entrance exams whether it is cuet whether it is sau you don't miss any you even analyze the wrong options that in what case it could be right this is the only approach like prepare notes for every pyq prepare notes along with cuet like cuet prepares you here sau is a bit upar uh, niche because there is no negative marking in sau ka entrance exam hmm. so it's a plus point here too you just analyze the pre- uh, previous year questions make your notes read them you are prepared got it okay so uh, you know now i want to understand about i i know you are not from uh, you know you don't have uh, more experience with the hostel life mm-hmm. but would you suggest students who are not who don't live in delhi traveling all the way from different states and is it worth you know coming from south india or north india or east india you know different places and uh, spending two years at sau what's the return that they would be getting what's the return on investment okay so there's an there's one insight from a day scholar at sau the lectures get get over at average 4 pm uh, in usual timings 
so after that each one of us like majority of us i'd say we have to travel minimum 1 hour for our homes and given delhi we have to like reach home at uh, an early time so after that the real things start like you you get seminars you have development study groups you have fest to attend to so the hostel people can actually bond over it can attend those fest can involve in organizing such things but being a day scholar it get, it becomes very hectic and it, it is also not very like uh, inclusive that way so the hostel hostel uh, hostlers get a very good opportunity that way hostel life is great actually i would uh, you get to bond with a lot of people this there's, there's a lot is there's another wow. thing hostel life is just another thing there but so it's i'd highly recommend if you get the hostel take it because you will develop some bonds over time and of course you will get so many opportunities in extra curricular activities like we celebrated holi there and uh, obviously day scholars were in part of it but i saw the videos and i was like wow it, it was so beautiful and everything okay and uh, how is the canteen and how is the food at sao <laughs> that's a very debatable topic <laughs> A canteen is uh, clean, <laughs> but I don't think so. I don't like the food there very much, so I don't consume it very frequently. But yes, it's good. We have two mess actually, so yeah. Okay. That's it about canteens. Yeah, because you know many people who come from different places. One thing that they want to make sure is what's the food? Will mm-hmm. they survive with the right food, right place? Right. actually it's a student run canteen also like you the students uh, have a group who manages the affairs of canteens there is one head that is a faculty member or one of the administrative staff but this one very good thing about the mess and the canteen thing is like that uh, if any particular community have a important thing going on for example some something like onam they they will prepare something special in south indian and you will have specials that ways in a week or something like that everyone can enjoy it even the day scholars they prepare it first in the morning and it goes on okay okay good got it sure okay so one last question i have so you know currently we know that everyone is moving towards um, coding r python and even that is becoming obsolete actually we are moving further ahead in ai Does Sao in any way prepare you for any of these coding languages? Yes, uh, we actually have a course, uh, uh, open elective course, which we have to choose in a second semester okay. because it's a credit based system. So we have to complete a certain number of credits. So we are offered a number of courses. Like uh, we had this uh, introduction to Python this year, and uh, actually this semester we'll get. a uh, similar course the next semester and we also have math labs okay. so math lab thing combined with python we we are taught that at least the basics yes talking about working knowledge that we have to develop on our own but yes python is taught as a course separately as a course as a course separately okay. it's a two credit course it's a small course but it it's very comprehensive Okay. Right. Are there any uh, guest faculties or are there any webinars that take place or is everything just taught in house? No, there is like there no there there are not uh, any guest la- lecturers, but we do have guest speakers, seminars, and webinars too. We have alumni webinars and. Uh, people from different different fields like someone specializing in economic inequality so we could have a budget session or an a session on that particular topic economic inequality on uh, with some guest speaker or with some prominent uh, person speaking up there got it okay so and we do have development study groups which goes on like on a weekly basis so everything is there in a development study group we have stu- it's a student body only okay. students discuss a paper and they like uh, have debates on it and uh, many different uh, thought process around it so it's a good involved in okay got it got it so um, so so to conclude 
we would go ahead and we would say that sau is a great place to be at because actually many of the students are still very confused whether they should be going at sau or not um and especially if they want to go in the research field mm -hmm. it is the place where you should definitely be at definitely go actually the whole masters in economics should be the place if you want to go into research like it's very it's very very helpful if you get a degree in masters and then pursue it for a phd thing because masters is very rigorous in that matter it gives you a very good insight what would research expect from you what kind of research questions you should explore thank you so much for your time swasti today it was great welcome ma'am any time you know students uh, find this useful and it helps them to join south asian university make that decision at least actually even i watched some of your interviews with some students from south asian university from dsc every place so i was also at that place sometime so i really hope that it is useful for the students now for sure it is it is thank you thank you so much for your time today